Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and welcome to the world's most stressful new car detail. Why was it so stressful I hear you ask? Well you'll have to stay tuned to find out. The brand new 2021 Toyota Yaris GR4 has come straight from the dealer and the entire car needs protecting from the carbon fibre roof down to the tips of the tyres. The Yaris GR4 is a rally inspired 4 wheel drive road going rally car with a 1.6 litre turbo engine producing 257 brake horsepower and 265 foot pounds of torque. 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds and it weighs 1280 kilograms. For your chance to win a brand new Toyota Yaris GR4, stay tuned for the mid video announcement which will have all of the information that you'll need to be in with a chance. This example is owned by a customer of mine and it's currently covered exactly 250 miles. It has gathered a bit of dirt within those miles although the owner is still running it in. We haven't had the best weather over here in the UK over the Christmas period but the current state of the car should make for some satisfying content. The protective films have been applied to the high wear areas including the bonnet, the door sills, behind the handles and the seats and the driver's floor mats. These will obviously need removing before the bodywork clean commences and due to this brand new vehicle being moderately soiled, we will want to adapt to an incredibly delicate approach to cleaning the car. This will help to reduce the risk of inflicting any kind of minor wash marring or even any swirl marks. On the typical brand new car detail with various BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, Bentleys, Rolls and even Porsches and Ferraris, the paintwork is so much more forgiving than what's on the GR4. Typically after washing a brand new car where it hasn't been washed by the dealer, there'll be zero marks of any kind in the paint after only I have treated it. This ladies and gentlemen is why this video is titled World's Most Stressful New Car Detail, so welcome along, please subscribe if you haven't already for eternal good luck. You'd think a compact sized vehicle like the sporty Toyota Yaris would be a straightforward car to detail. However, after myself actually doing one and this may just go for the red colour, there will be a few things to take note on if you ever come to detail one yourself. The interior, exterior, engine bay, arches and wheels are going to be getting detailed today, leaving the underside of the car for the owner to do himself. The cabin is very driver focused and rather simplistic. Alcantara fabric front seats and a leather rear bench, fabric carpet obviously and will address these different surfaces and materials in good time. Step number one for the new car detail, jack the car up a bit to reveal more of the arch and blast with the jet wash to remove the bulk of dirt and grime. Rinse the wheel down and have yourself a ready loaded bucket of warm water and a car shampoo of your choice. A selection of wheel brushes would be ideal so we'll be able to clean all areas. A bog brush looking thing to clean the arches and a soft wash mitt to clean the spokes on these delicate gloss black alloys. I'll use the same bog brush for the inner barrels and a different brush for the brake calipers, lug nuts and the tyres but that's as far as it goes. The key is to remove as much contamination prior to making contact with the vehicle so be sure to be nice and thorough with the jet wash. I'm using an iron fallout remover to clean the wheels and an APC for the tyres and arches. I'll treat each corner of the car one at a time and at this point there is no need to take the wheels off for this clean to happen. If the car wasn't brand new then yes the wheels would be coming off, but because there is minimal dirt behind then in the grand scheme of things it's a much better idea to keep the wheels on in this instance. Pre-rinse the bodywork to remove the vast majority of dirt and grime, followed with the application of a snow foam of your choosing. We are using a tester snow foam so the identity of the product is a secret.
while the snow foam around 8 or 9 minutes to dwell and then thoroughly rinse it all off. Be sure to pay close attention to the gaps and crevices to draw out all of the trap bits of debris. There certainly are a few curves on the Toyota Yaris GR4 so be sure to work around them throughout the entire detail. I use a microfiber madness in Credi Wash Mitt which is reserved for brand new vehicles. At this point there should be minimal dirt left on the exterior surfaces because you never guessed it, snow foam does work. We'll now want to adapt to a much gentler washing approach compared to your typical used vehicle. Always begin with the higher up surfaces first, i.e. the roof, bonnet and then pretty much the whole front back and sides panel by panel. With the lower sections being done last with a secondary wash mitt. You'll only want to apply minimal pressure to the wash mitt and just enough to keep it connected to the paint. Glide the mitt across each section as few times as possible, but still the vehicle does certainly need this hands-on contact wash. The two bucket washing method is absolutely vital and so is rinsing your mitt out thoroughly. Reload with fresh shampoo and then continue to the next panel. I wouldn't advise using brushes on new car details where gloss black, piano trim or even the painted surfaces are exposed because you may find that they'll become riddled with some unsightly light marring. I'll replace the brush stage with potentially cotton buds or even a microfiber towel later on in the detail. When the hand wash has been finished, rinse the vehicle from the roof down and will then begin decon stage 2. The tar and glue remover stage is going to potentially remove small bits of road tar that the car may have picked up within its first 250 miles on the road and it will even remove any glue residue left behind from the protective wraps. I do recommend that this is a vital decon stage for a new car detail because I've seen on many occasions different types of glue residue and even grease. Always use brand new microfiber towels with the new car detail quite simply to reduce the chance of marking the paint in any shape or form. I'll apply the product to one side of the vehicle at a time and immediately begin gently wiping over the surface. Only wipe each section of the paint minimal times to get the job done. Stay away from the rubber seals as they'll likely contaminate your towels with a black residue. Rinse the side when finished and then do the next. Leave the lowest down areas till last and the final rinse will prepare us for decon stage 2. The iron fallout stage is going to remove bonded contaminants from the exterior surfaces including any brake dust. Brand new cars are often stored in huge car parks before being shipped to their dealers so they can gather some dust, potentially rail dust which would be a type of iron. 
On white cars you will notice little specks lighting up as the chemical reaction takes place. On this almost blood red hot hatch though we won't see a single dribble I imagine, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any there. When the product has been given enough time to dwell in this will depend on the weather conditions because if it's hot it will dry up very quickly. You must complete this stage in the shade and be sure to spend the time rinsing the chemical off. I'll apply a final layer of snow foam for it to soak into the same gaps and crevices that the iron fallout product would have soaked into to help flush 99% of it out. If you don't complete this stage you will be left with red iron fallout puddles on your unit or garage's floor. Rinse the snow foam when it's been allowed to dwell for max clean time and that completes the wet work for the new car detail. I'll start the car up, switch the cars around in the unit to make way for the GR4 and at that point I'm going to announce the Yaris GR4 giveaway information right in front of your very own eyes. Massive thanks to BOTB, the dream car competition company, for sponsoring this video. BOTB have had two decades of winners and they now give away two cars every week with tickets starting at just 40p. Their dream car competition has over 180 cars that you can choose to play for and every single one now comes with 50 grand of cash in the boot. This includes the Toyota GR Yaris circuit pack which you can win along with the 50 grand cash for just £1.90. You only have to be 17 or over to enter and the competition closes at midnight on Sunday so get your tickets now. Please visit the description below to find the link to the BOTB site. With the Yaris now on the lift I'm going to contactlessly dry the car with a big boy heated car blower. This will reduce the chance of inflicting any swirl marks by eliminating an entire contact stage with using the contactless blower. Other benefits are removing the trap water from the gaps and crevices which is vital before applying any ceramic coatings. Surprisingly enough the little Yaris did take a bit of time to fully blow dry but we did get there in the end. Don't miss the door shuts, boot shuts, engine bay, wheels, arches, filler cap area and every other applicable place. I'm going to give the paintwork a single stage machine polish to maximise the depth of gloss and to add more clarity to the finish. Being a Japanese sporty motor I'm going to jump to the conclusion that it's the softest paint in the world so I'll load up the softest abrasive combination that Rupes have to offer. White on white will hopefully work wonders for the paint in conjunction with my own skills. Spread the polish on speed setting 4 and work it over a small section on your first panel. When the product is spread speed the machine up to speed setting number 6 and then adapt yourself to a slow and gentle polishing technique. The key is to keep the pad perfectly flush against the paint for the polish and pad to work their magic and then hey presto, a few hours later you're left with an awesome looking vehicle. Just a bit of hard work and concentration to get you there but the finished results will make it all worthwhile. After hitting the first section which happened to be the left hand side of the bonnet I'll slow the machine back down to speed setting 4 for a slower dueling process. Softer paints need a much softer finishing stage than harder paints particularly when you've also got some defects to remove and not just to get it all glossed up. Due to the clear coat on the Yaris being incredibly soft I have ended up putting in some marks of my own. Not ideal but it is what it is, I blame the paint because it hasn't happened before. Later on in the detail I also realise that unless you're very careful with buffing the polish residue off you can very easily and noticeably mar the paintwork. Whoever gets one of these I'd highly recommend having it fully PPF'd. That is going to be the only way to keep swore marks from inevitably making their way back into the finish. 
Tape up all plastic and rubber trim with some 3M detailers tape with the green tape being the perfect level of tack to suit the job in hand. Tape up the areas neatly and by neatly I mean don't let any of the glue residue on the back of the tape become poking upwards because if your machine polisher catches it, it's going to leave pigtails in the finish. This would be 10 times more noticeable on something like a red Yaris GR4. The last thing we want is pigtails in the paint or polish residue on the trim so be sure to tape carefully and neatly. This is how the paint is currently looking before machine polishing and we certainly do have our share of marring to remove. Like I said incredibly soft clear coat on this one, in fact the softest clear coat I've ever come up against. I'll take a hold of the Rupes LHR15 and show it where to go. Work with the contours of the vehicle and get it all nicely treated. You can switch to the smaller Rupes Mini Bigfoot for some of the tighter sections, however I do like to do the bulk of the work with the LHR15 machine first. Gently buff the polish residue to reveal a beautiful and defect free finish. As you can see on the lower half of the doors, the swooshing wash marring is quite horrendous. Take extra care if you ever treat one of these, and that's after me being what I thought was incredibly careful, obviously not careful enough. The joys of ceramic coatings will provide a thick layer of ceramic to protect against wash marring in the future. They aren't bulletproof, but they'll be a massive help. The scissor lift is a fantastic tool and I wouldn't be without it today. Line the car up on the lift and place the rubber blocks to align with the mounting points on the car and then send it up. After you've loosened the wheel bolts that is. Now I've treated the higher up sections on the car, I'm going to work on the rest of the car at more of a chest height. This will make things much more comfortable compared to doing it on the deck. I'll now go ahead and begin with the driver's arch using the Rupes Bigfoot LHR15. I'll hit the bulk of it and come back in with the Mini Bigfoot for the far more finicky areas. The paintwork isn't in need of an incredibly lengthy machine polishing session at all, it just needs a good going over to hit all areas for a mediocre amount of time and the finish will be perfect once again. The joys of soft clear coat I guess but be careful when it comes to buffing don't forget. I'll work each panel one at a time and when I'm happy I'll carefully buff the residue, inspect my results and then move to the next panel. There isn't much else to this single stage machine polish if I'm being completely honest. I'll show you plenty of before and after shortly but if you want to get into detailing in real life I'd suggest grabbing a cheap machine polisher and getting started because this is one of the most prevalent stages to getting a car looking at its best, whether it be brand new or a used vehicle. The key is holding the pad flat against the paintwork for that contact patch and then hitting all areas sufficiently, but I've already told you that. I'll be slowing the machine down to speed setting for on every panel for a better dueling process and we've already covered that one as well. If you would like some hands on training in real life or even a business consultation session then please visit jpdetails.co.uk and check out the relevant pages. I charge $2.50 per day of hands on training one on one with you and I could even travel to you no matter where you are in the world. The first hour's business consultation is £50 and £35 for every hour thereafter. Visit the website and get in touch to discuss a training package to suit you. 
I'm going to return to the rest of the car and I'll overplay some music to make the time go a little quicker. My apologies for the terrible buzzing noise in the unit, it's one of the lights which needs replacing which happens to be the one directly above the lift. Perhaps I have applied a little too much polish for this relatively small section, however it will still get diminished down enough so it isn't a problem. Maybe that amount of polish would have suited the bonnet. Another tip would be using a super soft feather duster to gently dust the paint between all of the different stages. This could potentially remove the small bits of debris that would otherwise mark the paint. The tighter curves and different shapes on the GR4's exterior certainly makes for the challenge with the combined nature of the clear coat and these marks here are going to need a little extra attention to resolve. The rest of the car for that matter is now looking stunning. There is quite a bit going on with the rear and it will be a simple case of utilising both machines to get all sections of the red and gloss black paint nicely polished. Take your time to do the vehicle justice and swap out your microfibers for new ones when you feel is required. A similar story with the front end but thankfully not quite as much paint in need of polishing as the rear. It'll mainly be the mini Bigfoot for this area and a handheld applicator. With all areas sorted I'm going to complete the wheels, tyres and arches. If we can offer some protection to the arches it's going to make them much easier to keep clean going forwards and to protect the metal chassis of the car. Starner Gloss Parlour Spray Sealant should work wonders protecting the plastic arch liner suspension and the partially painted chassis for a cost effective solution. 
The brake calipers will be IPA'd and ceramic coated with Geotenic C5 wheel armor. Apply the product sparingly to the entire surface and then gently wipe to remove the excess residue. This will make the calipers 10 times easier to keep clean and looking 10 times better. The same has been done to the rear arches which also have practically plastic arch liners and that finishes the arch and brake caliper treatment off nicely. Next up are the wheels and these are going to be IPA'd followed with a layer of Geotenic C5 wheel armour. They are lightweight BBS wheels and are a must tick for the options box if buying one. Even better if you win a free one on BOTB with 50 grand in the boot, not bad eh, don't forget to buy some tickets. There was a bit of brake dust sprinkled on the wheels and this was all cleaned up nicely. You can opt to polish the wheels but there is zero point in doing that on these today because they're already absolutely mint. I'm going to quickly wipe the engine bay down with Parler spray sealant to offer some basic protection and to get the area nice and tidy. Nothing too crazy but the details matter. The gloss black wing mirrors are going to be sorted with the mini Bigfoot and they'll soon become distant galaxy viewing platforms with the lights in the ceiling. Be careful not to collect any of that glue residue in your pads, otherwise you'll be in for a certain degree of trouble. With all machine polishing carried out on the car, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the exterior down with Geotanic Panel Wipe. This is a alcohol mix and it's going to remove all polish residue and oils from the paint in preparation for the ceramic coatings. You can either spray the product solely into your towels and then apply to the paint or apply the product directly to the paint. I'm pretty sure I did a bit of both. I'll be cleaning the windows, painted inner arch lips and exhaust at this point to get them all ready for protection. The first layer of ceramic to get laid down is called Geotenic Crystal Serum Light. On its own this coating is going to protect the paint for between 3-5 to five years. Ideally you'll want to top it with a product called XOV4 and this will then turn it into the 5 year coating. This coating is incredibly good and I've used it for years. It builds a durable and noticeably thick ceramic layer on your paint which is actually peelable if you so wish. It will protect the paint from wash marring, UV resistance, contaminants won't stick the same, in fact the benefits go on and on. The coatings add far more depth of gloss to the paint than any other type of detailing product but obviously a lot of the work is also in the prep. Apply the coating to a small section at a time and gently begin to buff with your first microfiber towel. Flip that towel a couple of times and then switch to your second towel to remove all final traces of the coating. The two towel technique I like to call it and you can even introduce a third towel if you're feeling obsessively fancy, sometimes I do myself. Treat the entire vehicle section by section and inspect your results regularly and thoroughly. If any ceramic coating dries on the paint and it hasn't been properly wiped over, it will be noticeable when it dries and it will need machine polishing to remove. Get it right the first time, so be sure to inspect your results. I'm going to continue working my way around the car and get this first layer of ceramic applied. I'll join you again when I'm done.
The wheels are all fully prepared and are now going to receive a single layer of GTENIC C5 wheel armour. This product will make them easier to keep clean and looking much better for far longer. The product will last for two years, three layers with two layers if done right. Apply the product to the face of the wheel and then thoroughly remove the excess residue with two microfiber towels. Apply to the inner barrel afterwards and remove the game with the two towel technique. Repeat this process on all four wheels and dress the tyres with your favourite tyre dressing and you'll then be on to a winner. The second layer of ceramic will be the XO V4 by G Technic and two layers of this will provide the CSL underbase with the much needed water repellent characteristics. Two coats of this to go on over the top and when it's finished you will breathe a sigh of relief. The application of the second and third layer of ceramic is exactly the same as we saw in the first. If you haven't lived with a proper ceramic coating before like the one being used today, then you will be in for a surprise if you do choose to have your vehicle ceramic coated. They really are the future of car care. I love to compare my GR4 prepared example versus a dealer prepared example because there are a few ups that dealer valitors could very easily make. I personally think dealers are going to struggle to perform any type of decent new car protection on one of these. Hell to that, I reckon some detailers will even struggle. I must say that I am an ever-growing master of my craft so you can be sure that I knock this one out of the park. I really want to drive one of these to see if they live up to the hype, but personally I think they'd need a few mods to get them remotely enjoyable considering what else I've become used to. Every nook and cranny is being ceramic coated whether they like it or not. You lot will all be sealed in for the next 5 years and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm even going to coat the honeycomb grill with the first towel as it's now become nicely moist as you know that JP has to capture the details. To initially apply each layer of ceramic a circular motion will help to distribute the product across the panel in a far safer way due to controlling the lubricity and using it to your advantage. It almost goes against the grain about what it states in the detailing bible of don't do circular motions ever, or sometimes there are instances where it's actually beneficial. Once the coating has been initially applied to the panel you can then smooth it all out nicely again using the lubricity of the coating to your advantage. What you should be left with before buffing off is an evenly applied coat of product over your one section. The first towel after you've gone at it for a couple of minutes and flipped the towel a few times, there should now only be a small amount of smeary product residue for your second towel to grab. The third towel could finally be used with an inspection light for a final check. Always check neighbouring panels for stray ceramic coating residue as it's easily missed. A scan grip eye match is an awesome coating spotting tool as is the Sun Match 2 and Sun Match 3. I would highly recommend each of these lights. I'll get the rest of the car covered with the final layer of ceramic and join you again to remove the tape and to protect the carbon roof. <laughs> wipe down with IPA for the roof to prepare the carbon roof surface that isn't lacquered or clear coated or laminated in prep for GTENIC Halo. The IPA will remove all nasties from the surface including a few polished blobs that have flicked up and settled on the roof. The same application process as the other ceramics we've seen and I've opted to apply two coats to the roof treating a quarter at a time and a couple of hours between each coat. The product is easy to apply and easy to buff off so no issues here. I'm looking forward to what the water repellency is going to be like. Quick layer of tyre dressing for the tyres and they'll then be given some time before putting back on the vehicle so we can ensure a good bond with the product is made. 
The second layer of halo for the roof was applied in double time. G-Technic G1 Clearvision Smart Glass is going to give the windows and windscreen the much loved water beading effect so we don't need to use our wipers when travelling around 35 miles an hour and up. A single layer for the side windows and three layers for the windscreen and don't forget to coat the wipers. Give the product 15 minutes on the surface and then buff with a microfiber towel. Follow with a glass cleaner and a second microfiber towel and you'll then be on to a winner. Remove the excess product on the tyres after they've been given a good amount of time to sit and then refit back to the vehicle. Don't tighten the nuts too much as we'll be talking them up to the correct torque setting of 103Nm in good time. Drop the vehicle back down and it's now time to sort the interior. Removal of all protective films and covers and I'll then dust the car down from top to bottom. Dust first, then vacuum, then clean, then a final vacuum to finish. Clean the interior windows, glass and dials and give the headlining a quick vac. Be careful with all gloss black painted bits of trim as these are usually very soft. The Detail Factory brushes are the softest brushes I've ever found so they would make a wise purchase ready for detailing some fancy brand new cars. The Alcantara seats will have a gentle wipe down with upholstery cleaner as they are high wear areas with the possibility of them being lightly soiled. I'd rather spend 30 minutes cleaning the leather and Alcantara seats and driver's footwell prior to applying the relevant g technic interior protection products. The leather bench at the back will have a light clean with an APC misted towel and on that note I'll join you again at the protection stage. Firstly I'll apply the G-Tenic leather guard to the rear seat bench and you will need to apply a second layer 24 hours after the first. Apply to the entire seat and then wipe with towel to finish. Couldn't be any easier, as long as you don't mind a bit of hard work. G-Tenic i1 Smart Fabric is going to protect the fabric for up to 3 years and be sure to wear a good mask when you apply this product. It's incredibly strong and it will leave you lightheaded within seconds. Apply to each footwell one at a time and thoroughly work into the fabric whilst wearing the glove. Wipe all neighbouring plastic and hard surfaces with an interior detailer to remove any overspray and by the time this stage is done the vehicle is nearly finished. Darna Gloss Silk High Gloss Detail Spray is going to be used to best present the door shuts and sills as there are a few grubby water stains that need to be removed and a bit of protection wouldn't go amiss. A brand new microfiber towel to address these areas is the only way to do it. The GR4 is finished after around 20 hours of labour and as you can tell it did turn out to be quite the time consuming process. The hardest part was the paint as it really did take the extra bit of attention to get it right. Seeing the car outside for the first time made it look absolutely magical. What a fantastic detail coming to a close then and before the car gets collected I'll torque the wheel nuts up to 103Nm of torque and I'll also be sure to re-clean the wheels after cleaning the brakes off driving the car in the car park. <laughs> 
Lesson learned on that one, I'll be drying off the brake discs before they come inside in the unit like I used to do at the old place, not sure why I stopped. So here it is then, the finished results after quite the stressful detail combating the super soft Japanese clear coat which didn't fail to live up to its reputation. As always, thank you for watching and please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future content. Visit the description below for your chance to win a brand new Toyota Yaris GR4. Give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.